Hello viewers, I'm Madhavi and I'm here to present a short video clip regarding theories of emulsification and this video is meant for the students of uh, first year of graduation in their pharmacy. I hope it helps anybody else also who are viewing this video. Now what is an emulsion? Now it is winter season now and you must be feeling dry so you want to apply some kind of oil on your body but the presence of oil it's sticky you don't like the feel it makes you appear dull cosmetically you're not liking it so what do you do you make the oil into an aqueous base and that is an emulsion you have a lotion here which is more convenient to apply spreads easily and is cosmetically more appealing that is one application which is a topical use <coughs> now here you have cod liver oil which is encapsulated or in a capsule can someone imagine taking such a big one? It's not so convenient for everyone to swallow such a big one. In this case, you need to convert this into a liquid dosage form, a liquid oral dosage form. So how will you convert an oil into a emulsion? Now the problem with oil is when you add oil and water, when you add oil to water, it's very, very obvious that they don't mix. It's obvious that they don't mix. Right? And on leaving like this, all the oil globules, they'll be coalescing on the top to form one single large layer. <clears throat> so before we go into the further theories of emulsion, we'll see what the definition of an emulsion is. Emulsion is a mixture or a biphasic dosage form in which one liquid is dispersed in the other homogeneously. Now the problem here is the system is not homogeneous. You have separation and they are not dispersed uniformly. <coughs> the problem with emulsion is oil and water are immiscible and here we need to know something about the surface free energy. Take this carrot for example. Now this is the surface of the carrot. When I cut it, I have one new surface here and another new surface here in addition to the existing one. Now let me cut it once again. So we have another surface created and one more surface created. Now in this way, when you are trying to break one object into larger or uh, multiple entities, like how the oil has been tried to be broken down into this, the surface energy increases tremendously because of which the system will try to come into a stable state and all the oil globules will try to coalesce to form a single large globule. So to continue the definition further, one phase disturb, distributed in the other stabilized by an emulsifying agent. To keep the oil globules separate from each other and not coalesce, you require an emulsifying agent. What does an emulsifying agent do and what are the types of emulsifying agents? Emulsifying agents uh, are meant, they are of many types. Those used for oral use, they include certain gums and hydrocolytes and you can topical use, you are using surfactants. <coughs> surfactants, now pharmaceutics is in your day-to-day -day life. This is a shampoo and it's a surfactant. Now we'll see how the emulsifying agents are acting. What is the mechanism? Then it is related to the theories of emulsification. One is the surface tension theory. Now, according to the surface tension theory, as the surface is more, the system will try to coalesce and again become a single entity. Now, if this new surface is stabilized by use of emulsifying agent and the surface interactions are reduced, then all these will exist as individual entities. That surface tension theory, now we have a model. You might have better animated videos and all, but with the available household things, this is what I am here to show you. Now imagine this as one globule of oil and another globule of oil. You can see here that the surface or the emulsifying agent is getting attached onto the globule and the effective surface of exposure is reduced. Oil and water, the effective surface is reduced. So because of this, the system is stable. 
the interface is stable and they are not trying to coalesce with each other. This is the surface tension theory where the interfacial tension between the globules is reduced because of which the system will not tend to coalesce. It is stabilized. The other theory is the oriented wedge theory wherein you are talking about how the emulsifying agent will orient itself as a wedge shape and it will completely cover the globule. As you can see the globule is covered. This is the oriented wedge theory. Next interfacial film theory. <coughs> In the interfacial film theory now here we have thermocol balls to depict the globule. Now each of them is a globule. They try to come together and coalesce. In the interfacial film theory we are having emulsifying agents which will be forming an interfacial barrier. The emulsifying agent will be covering or just coating the globule and they form a barrier. Now because you have a barrier on the globule, they don't tend to coalesce. This is the interfacial or plastic film theory. The other one is the electric repulsion theory. Now imagine this with the pinheads here. Each of them is a charged entity. The thermocol balls here representing a charge. So when two emulsifying agents, when the emulsifying agent is absorbed onto the oil globule, they are of the same charge and they tend to repel. This is the electric repulsion theory. They will not come together because of which again the system is stabilized. The other theory is steric stabilization theory. Now here if we have to see, again imagine each one is one oil globule. Now here you have the emulsifying agent which is again absorbed onto the surface of the globule and here the emulsifying agent is so big compared to the globule that there is steric hindrance. The globules cannot come close to each other because of spatial orientation and coalescing or merging is prevented. This is about the steric stabilization theory. Right? Now just to show how the emulsification is taking place, already we have oil added to water. Now some addition of emulsifying agent here. This is the household shampoo that you can use. You can see that all the globules which have been distributed into smaller size on shaking are continuing to remain in the small size. They are not coalescing to larger globules. So this is the system of various theories of emulsification. I hope this video is of help to you. The additional topics that you need to learn in relation to this is what is HLB and what is emulsifying agent. So obviously an emulsifying now if this is the oil globule, imagine to be the oil globule, the bell pins you have is the emulsifying agent, hydrophilic head and the lipophilic tail portion, right? So because of the reduction in the surface area which is exposed to the other medium or the dispersion medium, the system is stabilized. It is having a lower energy and it is stable. Now here these thermocol balls are representing charged entities where the electric repulsion theory is invoked. So because of same charges on these two globules, they repel each other and they exist as separate entities without coalescence. The other theory is the steric stabilization theory where you have one oil globule surrounded by a large emulsifying agent molecule. The arms, you know, the molecule is so long, the emulsifying agent that it poses a steric hindrance, a spatial hindrance because of which these two globules cannot come together and coalesce. So the system is stabilized. The other method here, now here, you know, suppose each of them is one oil globule, they come together or lead to coalescence. But if each of the globules is having an interfacial film or a plastic barrier around it, now this barrier is commonly given by your gums like acacia or clays like bentonite or talc. They will form a barrier around the globule and prevent coalescence. So here steric stabilization example is poloxamide, a very very long chain 
polymer surfactant and here you have the soaps anionic soap cationic soap triethylamine soaps which act as for reducing the interfacial tension so these are various theories of emulsification thank you